This is Andy here in Korea. Welcome to Seoul. And it's a very good day to you from Seoul, South Korea. And uh, today's vlog, we're delving further into Seoul. We're going to see a bit more of the Seoul, of Seoul, if you will. Last time we checked out a couple of old palaces and a few other things, and uh, today, well, we've got a few different kind of things in line. And the first thing for us today is to climb up the rest of this hill, because I've just climbed up a big one. No, no, really to what they call the Iwa Mural Village. Just by walking around this area, we should see a number of murals. Street art, if you will, perhaps strat. For the brave, they can just keep going up and up and up. So basically, I've just done a bit of research here. This is the memorial, the, the Live Well Memorial. And uh, this is uh, a memorial to, I presume, was on this site, uh, some sort of home or education centre between, between 1965 and 1987 that uh, helped educate and give confidence to underprivileged school kids, mostly, I think, sort of what in the States they would call junior school level. We are sitting just below Mount Naxan, and I think we've seen most of the murals. Um, there aren't as many as I was expecting, I'll be honest, but it, it seems that this, this did become such a huge tourist attraction that the residents got jack at the tourists, which, which is perfectly understandable. Um, and so they actually, apparently the two main ones, which were on staircases, they were, um, they were painted over or, pulled, or taken down. So there you go. Anyway, we'll walk back down and uh, see what's next on the agenda. <laughs> This is a bit of a detour. Oops. And for me. Okay, folks. Well, I've headed over here to Mount Naxam. Uh, and what we see here is a stone wall. And uh, see my next item on the itinerary is called the Seoul City Wall Museum. So I'm going to presume that this is the wall, but what a bad little view over there. Seoul is a flippin' big place. Up there. Just going to walk down a bit and I think we'll get to the said museum. Oh look, you can poke your head through here to the other side of the wall. Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's a, big, it's a bigger wall on this side, isn't it? But the museum is not on that side. So we'll continue on our side of the wall. Wall of China. I'm not even going to talk about other walls I could compare it to. <laughs> Trump joke. But a wall it is. Smile. What could the purpose of such a wall be? To keep people out, to keep people in? Which side is doing which and why? Perhaps all will be revealed at the Seoul City Wall Museum. I get a feeling I'm, I'm building this up way, way, way too much. It's going to be like half a room. Splendid day for a wall walk. Kind of more impressive looking back up the way you came. some sort of city gate. It's all very impressive. Shall we museum? Here she be. So it looks like the wall dates back to 1413. So we're talking about the sort of era of uh, the uh, palaces. Wow, massive. It is in its entirety and you can walk a fair way around the, the wall. It's uh, something that people like to do, hike the wall. I can only presume that the section that uh, I showed you has been very well renovated. So this is the section that we walked down, but probably just a little bit, probably just a tiny bit. So you've got different trails here that you can take around. The Naksan part is only 2.1 kilometers, and we probably did less than half of that. Well, this wall. The Johnson Dynasty was founded in 1392 and Hanyang was selected as the site for the new capital. A wall was built along the natural topography of the site and the layout inside the wall was organised according to the Confucian theory of the ideal capital city. The main streets inside the city were connected via the city wall gates to major roads that led to all parts of the kingdom. Perhaps these are the kind of tools that were needed to break the stone to make the wall that lives in the house that Jack built. But oh, how the city has changed. A little tip as to how to make a wall. Five rights of state manual. 
comprehensive collection of the national codes. Well, folks, very interesting look at uh, the history of Seoul City Wall. Here we are in the shadows of the high rise. These grounds can only be one kind of grounds. Folks, we have the Xiao Daemon prison here in Seoul. A prison built in 1908 uh, when occupied, I guess, by the Japanese. The Japanese built the prison, but it continued to operate into the 1980s. For 80 years it operated. And so, obviously, the Japanese were gone by the mid-1940s, shall we say. Um, and today, it's uh, a history hall, a museum, if you like. But uh, more recent history for you, something a bit different. Uh, and uh, hopefully interesting. We start with the administrative building. So we learn a bit about the history, imperialism, treaties, annexation. They call it a history hall, it's a museum. Okay, Sedamon Prison was built in the late era of the Dei Han Empire because of pressure by the Japanese. It was built with the aim of suppressing the Korean patriots who were fighting to regain national sovereignty. It is a historical building that was operated as a prison for eight decades, 1908 through to 1987, where many independence activists during Japanese occupation, as well as many democratization activists during the despotic regime after liberation were imprisoned, tortured and died. There you go. Sodomon prison during the Japanese colonial period, 1908 to 1945, end of Second World War. This is the opening of the history hall. I, I thought for a second they were holding weddings here, but uh, no. Unfortunately, we have many a uh, school group coming through here right now. Uh, so this this exhibition is to the uh, people that martyred themselves and fought against the occupation 1910 to 1945. March 1919, the 1st of March, the independence movement took place in which the whole of Korea participated. On August 29th, 1910, the Dehan Empire was colonised by the Japanese imperialists. From then until 1945, the Japanese suppressed the country with their harsh colonial rule, making Koreans fall into a state of slavery, and frantically attempting to liquidate Korean culture and language into that of Japan's. This is where we pay tribute to the deceased who gave their lives for national independence. underground interrogation chamber where people were interrogated and tortured and probably at times to death and it wasn't just the Japanese that tortured I mean when Korea got its country back after 1945 they were also using the same methods it seems <laughs>
This is the prison guard building. Administrative hub. This is a prison building, obviously. It's funny how much it reminds me of um, a couple of prisons in Melbourne that, that I've uh, vlogged. You think this is one cell, but you're wrong. It's three. One, two, three. That's um, small in my hotel room right now, and that's saying something. This seems pretty roomy. I think this is uh, memorials to some of the prisoners. All the information is in Korean. You've been at art too. I think that's uh, six o'clock and it's time to get the heck out of here. <laughs> it's been a very sobering place indeed. Um, yeah, but we've still got more on this video and it's probably going to be a bit more sobering because we haven't seen the war memorial yet. <laughs> I hate to say it, I just don't think the kids can vaguely grasp what their forefathers and mothers went through so that they could live the life they live now. And frankly, neither can I. And so here we are, folks, at our final destination for this vlog, and that is the War Memorial of Korea. And here we are. It looks like there is some sort of ceremony going on here right now. Um, hopefully we can still have a, a good look. And over there, there's a, I don't know if it's a protest. Could well be a protest happening. There are ladies in white coats. Or maybe they're, they're observing something. Some sort of significant day today, perhaps.
The Korean War began in 1950 uh, when North Korea decided to attack South Korea. Uh, Korea had been split after Japanese occupation up to the end of the Second World War. Korea was then split in the North and the South. Uh, the South controlled by the US and the North controlled by the Soviet Union directly after the war. They were then given their independence, but the North wanted to reunify the country, as I was told. And then that was quickly changed to they just wanted to invade South Korea and control it all with the backing of the Soviet Union. So the Americans backed South Korea and they fought a war and they, the North Koreans got a long way south, a long, long way south, way past Seoul, and then got pushed back. And in the end, in 1953, they say, you could say the war ended. Uh, I, I believe officially it's just a ceasefire or something like that. And it still is in 2024, more than 70 years later. So that's uh, what this monument's for. Here we have some sort of performance going on. Oh, it's been an interesting little show and quite patriotic. There's even people over there with flags waving them. It's very interesting to see how ceremonial being a soldier can be at some times. I think being a, a very good dancer would uh, qualify, a classical dancer would qualify you very well to be a soldier for these kind of events. Okay folks, we're gonna go and visit the memorial now because I could I could go on here all day and give you a 30 minute video of gun twirling, but I love gun twirling as much as the next bloke, but seriously, it is time to get on with the memorial. We can see, um, as we walk up here, all the flags from the different countries that in some way, uh, I presume helped the uh, South Koreans fight the North Koreans back up to their 38th parallel which is roughly where the border is today. So down there I believe we have the names of people that passed fighting 1945 to 1953 but the war didn't really officially start till 1950 I believe. But this is the place to commemorate the sacrifice of those who died defending the Republic of Korea. And so here we can see 170,478 people from the Republic of Korea. That is the uh, that is South Korea. And here from other countries, USA 36,574, Australia 340. As an Australian, I do like to find the Aussie connection and. We did send troops to fight in Korea. I'm 
Memorial Hall. This is not just a memorial to the war of the 1950s. This is a memorial to the warriors who fought wars dating back centuries. Here we can see an ancient soul with a wall around it. not just a memorial, it's also a museum. Check that out, that's a, that's a fair old replica of a boat. Korea faced invasion from Japan, from China, over the centuries, going back 16th century, 15th century. And has always, I guess, had to defend itself. Surrey-class patrol boat. If you are into your old war equipment, you would love this. It's pretty cool. It's not really my thing. It's still pretty cool. But of course, there's always the sadness behind it all. Then we've got these chaps, and I know what you're thinking, you're thinking it's a bit inappropriate for a war memorial, but I'm pretty sure that this is just to engage kids. Folks, uh, this has been a bit different from the first Soul blog. 
I think in this vlog I've really uh, I've seen just doing it how much this country the Republic of Korea is really um, built on fighting for their identity and their independence and their right to be their own country who knows one day maybe the two Koreas will be linked back together I don't know maybe it'll never happen maybe it's too late I, it, it's hard to say it's certainly been uh, an important element of coming to Korea to experience what I've experienced and showing you during this vlog. So thank you very much for joining me on this one. I really appreciate it. If you could like, comment and subscribe, it means a lot. Helps the channel to grow. Uh, take care wherever you are in the world. We have plenty more from Seoul coming up. In the next one, we're gonna visit the DMZ. Uh, and we're going to look into North Korea. Thank you again. May the journey never end. Mm.